Hi guys, this uh, video will probably be a bit of a mishmash. Uh, not quite sure what it'll include. I'm heading towards uh, a new ball turn, amongst other things. I've got some. Uh, I've got my length of drill rod came through the quarter inch, but I've also got a very nice box of assorted tool steel. I'll show you in a minute. Anyway, here. Uh, this is nominally a piece of inch and a quarter and I've just I can't get it down the spindle so I, and I couldn't be bothered to set up the steady and it was running just out of true so I faced it, centre drilled and just taken off a few thou and uh, I'll take this out to the bandsaw chop it off face it and finish up with a suitable chunk that we can use for um, turning the ball and I'll use that centre hole, probably set it in the forge or, or maybe uh, use that hole, we'll drill that and thread it so that I can use my uh, this is the one I've used before which may not turn quite true but once it's in the forge or with the ball blank on it it should be okay Well here's one of the latest acquisitions. So I've got my piece of quarter drill rod which I actually ordered before I got this lot. This uh, is a very nice collection of tool steel, supposedly 8% uh, cobalt and the previous use for it was by the look of it and description it was making hole gauges some of them are a bit obscure, one or two, it's 200. So I should probably check these out for useful dimensions. I haven't got a plug gauge set yet, or pin gauge set. Um, but a lot of this main diameter is uh, half inch. Lots of pieces. Sorry, did I say half? <laughs> Brain fart. Um, quarter inch. So I've got a lot of quarter inch to play with and I can use, in fact I can use round material for a lot of purposes so I'm quite pleased with it. Um, by the time the currency was converted from Canadian dollars to US it was still cost me about 45 bucks but a lot of that was shipping from Canada. <laughs> but you know tool steel being what it is the price is about three and a half pounds here and I should probably not be buying any more round stock, if ever. That uh, three eighths, that's um, three eighths. Yeah, a lot of good material there. So I shall press on with the ball turning blank, get things set up, and uh, probably just use a small piece of this, grind a new tool. And then we'll go ahead and see if we can cut a reasonable ball. I'm still not expecting perfect cut, but if it's adequate and consistent and better than I had before, I think I shall call it a day and call that my more or less final result. Well, I've cut this off on the bandsaw, turned it round, marked it up, just facing it off. I've got a bit of a chamfer on the other side as a starter for ball turning, I'll do the same on here. Well, I'm up against the uh, carriage stop it looks as though we've got another another couple of thou to go. I'll do it on the uh, compound. Of course, it's not super critical. Let's see where we are. That looks better. Let's 
let's see now. Uh, it's probably two or three thou too long, but I'm I'm happy with that. Better that way, I think, at the moment. So we'll um, just get a chamfer on there. Of course, the uh, ball blank doesn't have to doesn't have to have too much of a finish, really. Let's see what we can see on the camera there. I'm trying yet another angle. I keep throwing the camera in all sorts of weird places. <laughs> got an LED light above here, it may look a bit blue. It's just a very local light that's useful. So that's all I've got for now. So I'm going to turn that round. Maybe right in the three jaw, but this one's so unreliable I may put it in the four jaw. And uh, drill and tap that for the thread I'm using. Alright, we turned this round and uh, that was where I had the centre and then we put a little bit of chamfer there. I have drilled and used a number one tap and I'm just going to put the bottoming tap down there. I'm aiming for about uh, just a generous half inch and that should suffice and that basically will make the ball ready for putting on the putting I don't think it is set up absolutely dead true but what I shall do is put everything in the four jaw and uh, Set up the ball blank to run true, even if the uh, even if the arbor runs fractionally out. So I'll try and get. I've got to grind some tool as well. Out of all that stuff that I got, which I showed you in a previous clip, I got some nice convenient pieces of quarter. So I'm going to grind an end for the new tool. And then we'll set up the ball turner, hopefully, if nothing else comes up in between. <laughs> okay, here's a piece of quarter tool steel there. We've ground that. And we're fairly neutral there with regards to the angle. It's probably about one or two degrees back rake there. So we're going to try that, set that up, and I've got the ball blank set up. I'm centred for the ball and not for the arbour, which I suspect is slightly out, but that's all I'm concerned with running. That's within a thou at the moment. Well guys, here goes nothing. Uh, we're pretty much set up and I'm going to try the ball head adjustment, uh, boring head adjustment. I think I'm set up for diameter, we'll see what happens. I got the chamfer each end just to give me a slight start and uh, let's just put my on off lever back in, I have to take that out when I'm doing things manually. All right, let's have a look and see. Bit of a 
fiddle getting the uh, hex key in. Got some chatter there. May have to adjust the angle a bit. I noticed before that chatter was always worst at the early stages when you're getting these corners off. So I'm going to take on a bit further and uh, see how we go. Well, I think I've got my uh, tool angle pretty set up neutral, so it should be consistent for the whole sweep. I've just reset everything. <coughs> Excuse me, I've gone back um, into the chuck probably by, well I don't know, I didn't measure, probably an inch or so, something like that, because I think the chatter when I get it on this end is basically due to the difference in rigidity. I've only got a 3 8 threaded stub here and although this is done up tight on the thread, I think it just makes that slight difference. Also, I'm coming to the conclusion that um, at this stage anyway, taking a light cut isn't, isn't, there's not a lot of point. If I take a harder aggressive cut, it seems to be better for chatter. But anyway, this is still an experiment, I suppose, because I'm using the boring head adjustment being closer to the chuck now it's a bit hard to a bit hard to get into the uh, or in to find the hex in here anyway I'm going to press on I think I might use some uh, I haven't diluted any of this I ought to set up a little actually with with a little bit of water so I'm just going to smear some on and see if it helps a little bit. I've said before <clears throat> I think I'm getting to like the anchor lube better now. I've used it and tried it a bit more. This is what takes the time with this technique though, is getting the uh, adjusting the darn boring head. Still a bit squeaky. Yeah, still getting a bit of squeak. The actual finish there isn't too bad. There's slight evidence of a uh, rather rapid feed and a uh, little bit of chatter. I think that'll improve a bit. I made slightly change the uh, angle of the tool at the moment I've got a significant amount of negative rake on that and it may well be I'll be better off with something near a perpendicular so I'm going to again I'm going to press on see where we go I'm basically getting a fairly good cut but I'm still getting some chatter on this end I've taken the tool out, I've put a slightly different grind on the end so that the uh, rake is now probably only a degree or so and uh, diamond lapped it so it's got a good cutting edge but uh, there seem to be two extremes if I take a heavy cut and a slow feed I get the chatter this end is fairly good if I take a very light feed and um, sorry um, a slow feed and a light cut the chatter's not very evident it seems that at the moment anyway that I've got to take I can take pretty large cuts go over quickly get material removed and uh, then get some lighter cuts afterwards so maybe finishing cuts will be adequate but the material that's coming off the tool I quite like the behavior of the chips it's obviously a, a, a reasonably good cut in essence 
So we'll see. So it's probably going to be more. Um, probably going to be more chatter. In fact, I've half a mind. Although I'm liking the anchor lube, I've half a mind to set up the uh, oil drip just to get some lube on this uh, this side. I'll see. I'll think about that. Just done a quick couple of cuts with the oil drip, but uh, to be honest, it doesn't really help very much. Excuse me. Let me turn the oil off. Yeah, I don't think it's helping a lot, and the anchor loop does just as well if I apply it, but otherwise I can cut dry. So let's take a few more cuts, and I say you're probably going to hear some chatter. But I'm not going to worry about it for now. That's the worst point, just there. Well, I may try one more adjustment on the tool. Basically, I like the tool, but I'm annoying about this chatter. Oh, one point I should forgot to mention. Um, the boring head, incidentally, is a cheapie. All right? It's one of the budget ones. It's not one of the super dupers. I've got the gib screws taken up fairly tight so that there shouldn't be much slack on the dovetail. And uh, this area for the bar coming through on the tool holder, that was made to a tight tolerance. So there shouldn't be much slack in the system, but... Uh, Obviously there's a lack of rigidity somewhere and part of it's in the end of the ball. Alright, I'm not getting a lot of improvement. It's partly the, the speed and feed situation. And I'm probably being a bit fussy at the moment at this material removal stage to get anything like chatter, but it's annoying that I'm getting it. Um, I think I might make a new tool holder for this bring it back in further and drill straight. I've got this offset on here which I don't think is helping matters actually because it's making the dovetail come further out and I think I can still get my swing just to have a straight tool. There's something else yet to try but I'm going to try and finish this off. Uh, well I think I will. I may stop halfway, you never know. Okay, here's the deal. I'm getting frustrated. <laughs> There's <coughs> a bit of half inch material here, it's any ordinary mild. I'm going to make make a new tool holder, bore it straight, I've just put the three jaw on, kept the four jaw set up so I can hopefully put it back on and be running pretty true. So put some half inch in here, face it off, both ends, uh, bore it down for a quarter, another set screw, Regrind the tool and see where we go from there. <laughs> Probably nowhere. Alright, new tool holder. I'll try anything. I <laughs> see. I'm just putting a small stub drill on a Morse taper down just to get a start before I go in with the quarter. Finish that off and put the quarter down. Then I've just got to uh, cross drill for a set screw. Yeah, I'm not going to bother to drill and ream. I think we'll manage with this. I've done it before. We just it's a fairly new drill. This one. my inch, which is what I want for depth. Now I just got a cross drill and tap. So a bit of fiddle. So we've got a new tool holder, uh, board parallel, 
the tool is possibly a bit short. I may have to bring it out slightly because of clearance here. But uh, I've just taken a cut, a light cut. It seems a little better, not entirely free of noise, but I think it maybe will be a little bit better. Well, not a bad cut. Starts to make a little bit of a squeak up as it transitions off this area. But I'm going to take a load more cuts and see how I go and I may have to uh, readjust the tool a little bit. I think it's a bit better. We'll see. Yeah, slight improvement. It certainly feels better. I've just got to watch clearance of the tool holder but uh, I'll just take another couple of passes for you, then I'll not bore you with the video all the time. <laughs> video is getting too long isn't it? I keep stopping and starting and try this, try that. Now overall that was considerably better, quite a lot better. Um, so I'm going to finish that off to the point where we've almost got the ball and then I'll come back and see if we're still getting halfway decent cuts. You might notice the chips coming off look quite good. Uh, they didn't look like what I'd call uh, stress chips or scratch. They were definitely cut chips and that in itself is fairly encouraging. We've got a damn fly. We've got pesky flies now, the weather's hot. Have to get out the fly spray. Alright, I'll see you a bit later. Another look. I'm sort of keeping you informed as we go along. I've had some quite good cuts a little bit of squeak but not much. This tool of course at the back of the ball is not going to get me down right to the very end. I may probably just have to use a file to flatten that off. I'm not sure not having done it this way before. Actually my lever on here is a bit long. <laughs> it sweeps such a large arc, I should probably shorten it and get better control then actually. So when I'm coming back this way it uh, tends to run away from me. Well I've only got another little bit to go 
uh, looks as though my adjustment is not quite right to get this end finished and we're very close to finish here so I should think uh, I'm just going to check that adjustment a minute I think we're about right I was just checking to make sure and see if this uh, end is going to finish it may mean reducing the diameter slightly because we're getting close on there Within a whisker of just getting that end there, which will reduce the diameter a bit. It's not going to be quite the diameter I thought, but my radius across there is correct. So uh, I'm just going to carry on with that and finish it. Yeah, this is reducing the diameter a little bit beyond uh, what I'd thought, but I've got my sweep right, so I'm just taking one more pass on it. I seem to have lost a fair bit of diameter, although I set it up for equal sweep from end to end. And I can see by the uh, thread area here that I was probably actually not quite uh, correct for this direction. I got the carriage locked, but it looks as though I didn't start off close enough to that end, so I finished up a bit smaller. Not to worry, the main thing here was to see what sort of finish we've got. If, if I can zoom in, uh, if I put this LED off, I don't know if that helps at all. I've been using this to get a bit more light on my actual work there. Slightly bluer light. So, you may have noticed, as long as the focus was holding, that the, um, the cut... I'm going to disengage everything now. Let's get that back. I've definitely lost some uh, a bit of diameter on that from my blank. So that's... Uh, oh, I don't know, maybe 
not lost a whole lot. That's still... Oh yes, it was meant to be one and a quarter and it's actually just under 1.2, so I didn't get set up quite right. Oh, that'll come... Excuse my hand. Let me come back and zoom out again. Let's see if I can get that off. I definitely didn't bias it quite quite right. And uh, the round form of the tool has left me a slight neck. So I did screw up a little bit. I mean that can be filed off. I'm not too worried about it. But the thing is the actual cut. The actual cut. And as that progressed and I redid the tooling lot better. Lot better. So I'll put it back on here and uh, give it a good polish and just show you the final final result. Right, well I've not had to use a lot of paper. That's an old piece of, uh, can't even remember what grit that is. Not all that coarse. And then uh, a bit of 600, I, haven't, I think it's 600. I haven't gone beyond 600. And I'm just going to put a little bit of polishing cream on, but I could go further. I mean, I probably spent two minutes just getting rid of the uh, bit of tooling. It's got rid of most of it, but I could probably take it further. aside the bit of a neck on it which in fact is not really a big problem when I think about it it's uh, I mustn't get too close I keep forgetting when this is zoomed in I can't get too close to it so there we are I'll um, I'll just finish this off with a, a quick resume rundown Tell you what, <laughs> if you've stayed with it this far, you've done very, very well. Uh, goodness knows how long it's going to be when I assemble all the clips. But uh, yeah, we've gone through various stages of not so good and problem, but I must admit the time I spent making the tool holder and uh, setting it up so there was less tool projection and another grind, I think I've got the angle fairly good, probably about one or two degrees I think um, so uh, <laughs> we, we've got the ball albeit not perfect uh, the, I gave it a quick polish it's it, it, it's not bad it's not bad I'm zoomed right out now but um, if you look very closely you can still see a little bit of machining but what I liked about it was and why I feel that I've more or less cracked the problem, apart from practicing a bit more. Um, firstly, using the boring head adjustment method, although this boring head is not, um, you say it's a cheapy really, and even with the gib screws fairly well done up, you can feel that there's a terrific amount of backlash in the thread. Um, so it's a bit primitive in some respects, but it does the job. Uh, but most of all, I was ple I'm pleased that the tooling is basically working out, and I give thanks again to Robin for helping me out there with some pictures. Uh, the as I mentioned earlier, and I'll say it again, the chip formation was basically fairly clean. Uh, it wasn't scratching; it was actually making a cut, 
and during those last phases, assuming I haven't got one completely lost because of focus, we'll have to see. Um, the chips coming off were very good and as the sphere gradually grew, in other words the machined area got bigger, uh, the cut seemed to be getting smoother and uh, I'm, I'm going to go with that. I think the next, the next ball I make will be the same basic method. I'll just practice a little bit more. Um, might even do something in brass at some point. But I'm happy with that. I may experiment a little bit more with tool angles and such like, but uh, in fact I ought to just show you the the tool as I as I used it in the end. Hang on a minute. Now this grind was down and dirty. You can see perhaps there's there are two angles there. One's an old angle and the other is a new one which is what we were using and uh, that's the cutting area just there I can't see a lot of wear, there's a little bit maybe as I said earlier when I was reviewing the uh, round tool seal I got which I'm very pleased with, <laughs> lots of quarter and it's reputedly 8% cobalt so anyhow, that's the tool, and uh, I'll probably make a cleaner grind to the same basic angle for further work. Um, there we are. And reiterating, if you stayed this far, thanks a lot for watching. <laughs>